Matthew chapter 14, look at verse number 22. Matthew chapter 14, verse number 22. Look what it says. And straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him unto the other side while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto, unto them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer. It is I. Be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid and beginning to sink. He cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his, his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith. Wherefore didst thou doubt? And when they were come into the ship, the wind ceased. Then they that were in the ship came and worshipped him, saying, Of a truth thou art the Son of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Tonight, I want to begin a new series of lessons entitled, Get Out of the Boat. Amen. Get out of the boat. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Now, <clears throat> This series is designed to uh, stir you up, to get out of your stagnant state, amen, the state of not flowing, the state of not moving or advancing, the state of not developing. I want you to get out the boat, amen. amen. Tell your neighbor, get out the boat. Tell them again, get out the boat. Amen, amen, amen. Go to 2 Peter chapter 1. 2 Peter chapter 1. Get out of the boat. Praise the Lord. Amen. So many believers are stuck in a stagnant state in their lives. And it's time for the believer to get out the boat. And my assignment in this series of lessons is to stir you up. Amen. Stir you up. So that you can have the courage to get out the boat. Amen. 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 Second Peter chapter 1. Look at verse number 12. Second Peter chapter 1, verse number 12. Look what he says. Wherefore, I would not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things. Though you know them and be established in the present truth. Yea. I think it meet as long as I am in this tabernacle to stir you up by putting you in remembrance. Amen. You might have heard faith before. Amen. But I'm not going to be negligent and, and keep you ever mindful of what God says about faith. Amen. So I'm going to stir you up. Now, I'm going to do something a little different in this series in that I'm not going to look at Peter right now. Peter is not the person I want to look at. I want to look at the other 11 that's still in the boat. And I want to evaluate why they did not get out the boat and walk on the water. Amen. See, because many times we will look at Peter and start criticizing Peter. Oh, he started to sink. Well, at least he got out the boat. Amen. Yeah, he, he, he did get out. And the rest of the folks still in the boat. So I want to look at tonight. Why are they still in the boat? Amen. And, and, and to put it in, in our day, why are you still in the boat? Because it's not enough to look at those 11 that's still in the boat than to evaluate our lives and see why you're still in the boat. Amen, amen, amen. So, so, so why are people still in the boat? Amen. I want to submit to you tonight the first reason why that believers are still in the boat is because of fear. Amen. Fear. See, Satan uses fear as a weapon to derail you and challenge your resolve to do what God says you can do. 
Now, how many of us always, we quote Philippians 4.13. Anybody know what that means? What 413 says? What it says? I can do all things what? Through Christ what? Now he says you can do all things through Christ. Well, why isn't it that we're doing not doing it all things? I submit to you because of fear of failure. The devil has tricked the believer to thinking that you're gonna fail if you get started. Amen. And that's a tactic of the devil to say, you, you're not gonna make it. You're going under. And that's why so many believers are still in the boat. Because they are afraid to get out the boat. Go to 2 Timothy chapter 1. Now we must understand that God did not give us a spirit of fear. Amen. So whenever I find myself in a fearful state, I must realize that it did not come from God. Amen. You're scared of this. You can't even fly. You don't even want to go on an airplane. You're scared to get on an airplane. <laughs> and you know, Pastor, I, you know, I, I, I'm going to drive everywhere I go. Why? Because I, I don't like to fly. Why? Because I'm scared. Yeah. Amen. How, how, how many of you have never flown before? Okay. Put your hand down. How many of you haven't flown because you're scared? You have not flown. You have not flown because you're scared. Oh, okay, there's just one person honest out of all them folk. Second Timothy. Oh, no, no, don't worry about it. Second Timothy chapter 1. You don't want to go on the cruise because you're scared the boat going to go down. You think it's the Titanic. Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Look at verse number 7. Second Timothy chapter 1 verse 7. For God had not given us the spirit of fear but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So fear didn't come from God. So if it didn't come from God, it must have came from my adversary. Amen. And see, see, oh, good, glory to God. Look what God just told me. See, see, y'all need to stop playing them little, little scary, scary games at your house. Boo! And you got your kids in a state of fear. You taught them that. And now they're scared. They're scared to come out their room. God didn't give us a spirit of fear, but a love and a power and of a sound mind. Mm. Go to Mark chapter 5. Amen. See, fear will distract you from your original confession. Amen. On Sunday, I'll be talking about what do you say? And uh, if you get into fear, you will change your confession. Amen. Amen. And if you change what you've been saying that, that, and then go contrary to the word of God, you ain't going to get it. Amen. Amen. Mark chapter 5. Look at verse number 21. Mark chapter 5, verse number 21. Watch this. Look what it says. And when Jesus was passed over again, by ship unto the other side, much people gathered unto him, and he was nigh unto the sea. And behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogues, Jairus by name. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet, and besought him greatly, saying, My little daughter lieth at the point of death. I pray thee, come and lay thy hands on her, that she may be healed, and she shall live. Now that's his confession. Jesus, if you lay your hands on her, she going to be healed and she going to live. Right? Jump down to verse 35. While he yet spake, there came from the ruler of the synagogue's house certain which said, Thy daughter is what? Dead. Is dead. Why troublest thou the master any longer? And as soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said unto the ruler of the synagogue, What? Be not afraid. Don't get into a state of fear right now. Just believe. See, what was about to happen was he was about to change his confession because of the news that he received from his house that she's already dead. Jesus said, don't be afraid. Just believe. Verse 37. And he suffered no man to follow him, save Peter, James, and John, 
the brother of Je John, the brother of James. And he come into the house of the ruler of the synagogue and see the tumult, the uproar, the confusion, and them that wept and wailed greatly. And when he was come in, he said unto them, Why makest ye this ado and weep? The damsel is not dead, but what? Now, the next verse say they start laughing at Jesus. They, they like, who does he think he is? That child is dead. D-E-A-D, -E dead. And he says that she's just sleeping. But Jesus tells him, look, you watch your confession. Don't change your confession about what you see right now. You just keep on believing what you said from the jump. Now, Jairus was the, one of the rulers of the synagogue. So Jairus was somebody that everybody knew. So if, if they got the word that Jairus' daughter had died, guess what? The house was filled with folk. Hey Amen. They, they were there crying out, weeping. So when Jesus gets there, he said, why y'all crying? That child is not dead. She's asleep. Mm, mm, mm. Verse number 40. And they laughed him to scorn. But when he had put them all out. There are some folk that you just need to put out. Amen. The, the folk that want to keep you in your pity party, put them out. The people that want you to cry in your milk, put them out. Amen. Put them out. Amen. <laughs> he taketh the father and the mother of the damsel and them that were with him and entered in where the damsel was lying. And he took the damsel by the hand and said unto her, Talitha Kuma, which is being interpreted, damsel, I say unto thee, arise. And straightway the damsel arose and walked, for she was of the age of 12 years. And they were astonished with great astonishment. And he charged them straightly that no man should know it and commanded that something be given her to eat. So look what Jesus did. He said, that girl ain't dead. She's sleeping. Now watch me get up. Get up, girl. Amen. And the Bible says she got up. No hesitation. The girl just got up. But he had to get people who were in agreement with him before he could do some things to work it out. That is why you can't have everybody <laughs> trying to agree with you. Because they won't agree with you. You got to put them out. Say, put them out. Put them out. Amen, amen, amen. Huh. Fear will have you change your confession. Praise the Lord. Amen, amen. Mm -mm -mm. Amen. Now, now, now. Go over to uh, uh, Mark chapter 7. The second reason I want to suggest to you why people are still in the boat, okay, is because of tradition. Amen. Tradition. <laughs> We've been doing this all, all our lives. And that has kept you in the boat. Amen. You know, when we, when we first started, you know, you know we, we, we don't have the, the, the customary altar call. We don't march the choir in, you know, we had the hands in the back, you know, side to side. Yeah, by faith, yeah, yeah. Leaning on the Lord, yeah. We, we don't have a customary, we don't walk in like that. And you know, some folk have a problem with that because they say, well, you, you, you know, you're not, you don't do everything we do. Well, some of the things that you do might not be pleasing God. Amen. Tradition to keep you from getting out the boat. Amen. Amen. See, see, that's why that's why a whole lot of folk. That's why that's why folk right now, you know, God done told them to come here to this church to get this word, to get out the boat. But they still in the boat because they family still there. You know, we was raised in this church. Amen. My grandpa founded this church. His name is on the plaque. Are you getting fed? That's all that matters. Are, are you getting fed? If you're not getting fed, it's time to make a move. Okay, 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 okay. Mark chapter 7. <laughs> Mark chapter 7. Look at verse number 3. Mark chapter 7, verse 3. For the Pharisees and all the Jews, except, 
uh, they washed their hands oft, eat not, holding the traditions of the elders. And when they come from the market, except they wash, they eat not. And many other things there be, which they have received to hold as the washing of cups and pots, brazen vessels and tables. Then the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, why walk not thy disciples according to the tr traditions of the elders, but eat bread with unwashing hands? And he answered and said unto them, Well hath Esaias prophesied of you hypocrites. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. As it is written, the people honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Now, now, them boys was talking about the traditions. And Jesus turned around and called them hypocrites. He said, y'all done stacked up all these traditions. But in essence, y'all really hypocrites. Because y'all talking with your lips. But your heart is far from me. You ain't, you ain't doing nothing I told you to do. But you done built up all these traditions. You got to have the A-B selection. No, no, no. Let's, let's, let's go back. Let's go back. The deacons got to have the devotional. I mean, I mean, you got to whine and cry and climb the rough side of the mountain. And then once Deacon said his prayer, sung his song, and then, then, the, then the choir going to march in. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen, amen. But he said, you honor me with your lips, but your heart is far from me. Now, how, how many people, how many people you know talk a good game? But when the rubber meets the road, and it's time for them to live this thing out. That their lives are not anywhere comparable to what they've been saying. Verse 8. Verse 7. How be it in vain do they worship me, teaching the doctrines, uh, for doctrines, the commandments of men. For laying aside the commandment of God, ye hold the tradition of men as, uh, as the washing of pots and cups and many other such like things ye do. And he said unto them, Full well you reject the commandment of God, that you may keep your own tradition. You'll put my word aside just to keep your tradition. Look, look, I, look. coming out of my background, especially dealing with the Holy Spirit, they told me growing up that I had all the Holy Ghost I needed. And so that tradition kept me blinded from receiving the gift of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. All because somebody that was already in church told me I got enough of that. It don't take all that. And then you start reading the word when it says that the Holy Spirit is meant for all of us. Amen. And that <laughs> one of the evidences is that I'm speaking in other tongues. And it was like, I've been missing this all my life because somebody in church told me I didn't need it. Mm. Jump down to verse 13. Making the word of God of none effect through your traditions which you have delivered and many such like things ye do. You say, you, you made my word of none effect. My word have no power in your life because you, you, you're more concerned about your tradition. Okay, here's another traditional thing. Woo, I'm going to get myself deep in trouble. <laughs> Women can't wear pants to church. Now, here's, here's how they try to justify that thing. That women shouldn't wear anything pertaining that to a man. Okay, all right, all right, all right. Well, if she go to the store and go into the women's department... And buy her a pair of women's slacks. That ain't nothing. That don't have nothing to do with no, no man stuff. Look, those of you who sew, the zipper is on the other side. Am I right? Men zip up on the right side. Ladies zip up on the left side. Yeah. Gotta <laughs> make sure. Gotta make sure. Gotta make sure. Gotta make sure. I want to make sure I was saying that thing right. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Yeah, yeah. 
Traditions. Traditions that will keep you in the boat. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Traditions, man. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Keep you in the boat. And, and you got to get out the boat. Put the tradition down and get out of the boat. Amen. <laughs> Go to uh, uh, Nehemiah. Nehemiah, chapter number four. Page 645 of those who have the Faith Christian Center Study Bible. <laughs> Praise the Lord. The third thing I want to su submit to you tonight are why people don't get out of the boat. It's because of the haters. The haters. Amen. People that's going to talk about you. Put you down. Why you, why you have to believe for all that stuff? Hater. Amen. Haters. People don't get out the boat because they don't want to be persecuted. Let me, can I, can I give y'all a news flash? Everybody ain't going to like you. No, no, no. Now, we would love for everybody to like us, but everybody ain't going to like you. They ain't going to like you how you look. They're not going to like you because of your dress. They're not going to like you because of your car. They're not going to like you because of your house. Look, they just don't like you because you talk different. So you're going to have haters. Amen. But don't let the haters keep you in the boat. Amen. Watch this. Chapter 4. Nehemiah. Chapter 4. Watch this. Watch this. But it came to pass that when Sam Ballot heard that they built the wall, he was wroth and took great indignation and mocked the Jews. And he spake before his brethren and the army of, the, of Samaria and said, What do these feeble Jews uh, what do these feeble Jews? Will they fortify themselves? Will they sacrifice? Will they make an end in a day? Will they revive the stones out of the heaps of rubbish which are burned? Now Tobiah the Ammonite was by him. Huh. See, whenever you got one hater, they got some by him. Okay? And he said, even that which they build, if a fox go up, he shall even break down their stone wall. But look what Nehemiah said. Hear, O our God, for we are despised, and turn their reproach upon their own head, and give them for a prey in the land of captivity, and cover not their iniquity, and let not their sin be blotted out from before thee, for they have provoked thee to anger before the builders. So built, we, so built we the wall, and all the wall was joined together unto the half thereof, for the people had a mind to work. But it came to pass that when Sanballat and Tobiah and the Arabians and the Ammonites and the Ashdodites heard that the wall of Jerusalem was, were made up and that the breaches began to be stopped, then they were very wrong and conspired all of them together to come and to fight against Jerusalem to do what? See, your haters might not even like each other. But when it comes down to you, they'll come together. Just to try to hinder you. <laughs> to hinder you from getting out of the boat. Amen. But you cannot let the haters keep you in the boat. Amen. They just hate us. Amen. Now, just so that you think that you don't get the mindset that the haters are just the enemies. You got haters in the house. Yeah, you got haters in the house. Joseph, haters was his brothers. The people that was eating the food at the same table with him. Amen. He goes to his brothers and said, brothers, God gave me a dream that one day, one day, you're going to bow down to me. But I'm going to deliver you. And they say, who does he think he is? Daddy already gave him a special coat. Look at him. He already got favor. And now he coming and telling us that one day we're going to bow down to him? Oh, no. Look, the dreamer cometh. 
See, they were trying to put him down. Now, they sold the boy off into slavery, got in the bottom of his house, so on and so forth, right? Now, it didn't look like the dream that God gave him when he initially started. I want, to, I, want to, I want to share something with y'all. Because see, some of y'all got dreams and visions from God. But right now, it don't look like the end result that God promised you. But that's okay. Just give it some time. That whatever God promised, he's able to perform it. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So the haters was in the house. The haters was in his house. In his house. In his house. Was in his house. See, see, right now, some of your children could be the haters. But see, they don't know that one day you're going to deliver them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. David, can you testify about the haters? Yeah, yeah. One day I decided to go down to get my brother some food. And they were fighting these Philistines. And this one Philistine named Goliath was talking trash. So I go down to bring my brother some, and I hear what Goliath was saying. And then I heard the challenge that was made that if somebody would go down and fight and kill that giant, that, that look, the whole family would never pay taxes again. Not only that, but I will give my daughter's head to him in marriage. And David said, hey, that sounds like a good idea. Hey, you know, that's a pretty little girl. And so, uh, uh, and so as it was, David's brother, Eliab got upset with him. He said, what are you doing down here? You need to go back to the house. He said, I'm going to fight. I'm going to fight this giant. He said, don't we have a cause here? His brother said, no, nah, no, nah, you just want to be seen. That's all you want. You just want to be seen. And David said, no, nah, no, nah, I'm going to fight this giant. But the hater was somebody in his own house. Haters, haters. Go to 2 Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3. Why don't we get out the boat? Because we don't want to we don't want to live with the persecution. The persecution that will come from the outside and the inside. Amen. But let me show you something here. 2 Timothy chapter 3. Let's just go to verse 12. No, let's start at verse 10. But thou hast fully known my doctrine. Man of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, patience, persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra, what persecutions I endured. But out of them all the Lord delivered me. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus. What? You shall be persecuted. You shall have some haters. When you are doing what's right, listen to me now. They're going to hate on you because of your righteous stand. You say, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All your little friends, when you start doing it right, when you tell them, no, I'm not going to the club, I'm going to stay home with my family. Haters going to rise up. Oh, you think you're holy now. See, that's a hate. That talk of hater there. That's hater talk. Oh, you think you're holy now, huh? Yeah, yeah, you so holy, you can't come out with us no more. Hater! You got to mark them haters. Now, now, here's the thing about haters. God will turn that situation around. Well, those who are hating on you will come back and, and ask you how good God is. Amen, haters. Haters. Mm, mm, mm. Mm. See, when we understand... That we are not of this world. We have built in haters. We'll be better. Amen. See, because your light exposes their darkness. So it's always going to create haters. I mean, Jesus said we are the light of the world. And if we are the light of the world, it will expose their darkness. Amen. And it's going to create. Some haters. So I'm not going to get upset with haters. Uh, look, as a matter of fact, your haters are working for you. Say what? Yeah, your haters work for you. 
look, look. Your haters, your, look. They're going out and tell everybody about you. That, that is free advertisement. That's, that's the best form of advertisement is free stuff. So every time your hater is talking about you, they give you free publicity. Talk about me. <laughs> look, they, look, when they talk about me, they say, yeah, that's the one that come on TV all the time. Look, guess what happened? The fun go watch the TV program. <laughs> and then they, they, they be watching. They be like, well, I don't, I don't see what you see. Oh, I just don't watch it no more. No, I, I'm hooked now. I'm hooked now. <laughs> Hater! <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. But that is, it's free publicity. Because my light is exposing that darkness. Huh. So when, 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 when the haters rise up, you make a decision that I'm not going to give up. I'm going to stand in faith. No, I'm not going to move. I'm going to get out this boat. I ain't moving. I'm getting out of the boat. Amen. <laughs> you have to make a decision not to be satisfied with your adversary. No, no. Look, I got, I got, I got a text message today. From one of our members and uh they were under a spiritual attack and i told them i i i, I text them back and said listen don't 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 let that that attack stop you stop you from doing what god told you to do i say now you go and fight back but you fight with the word i mean you don't you don't fight with with with, with the, the natural things you start fighting spiritually you tell that devil Today is your last day messing with me. And they, they text me back, okay, pastor. I say, yeah, yeah, you, you got to fight. You, you got to let the devil know that you ain't intimidated. No, you can't intimidate me because you're a hater. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Then I got to make a decision that I'm going to keep my resolve and glorify God. Hallelujah. Mm -mm -mm. Okay. Okay. The last thing I want to submit to you tonight. Why? Believers are still in the boat. What was the first reason I told you? Fear. 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 Just scared. Scared of failure. Scared of people. Just scared. Second, what I said? Tradition. Tradition the status quo. We, you know, we've been doing this all our lives. This is the way we've been doing this. I was raised this, this way, and I'm going to stay this way. Hey, I was going to say something else. Praise the Lord. <laughs> third, third reason. The haters. Amen. The haters. But we, we, look, the haters are, are free advertisement for us. Yeah. Amen. So when they start talking about you, Sister Pauline, you say, hey, thank you for the free advertisement. Yeah. Amen. The fourth reason I want to submit tonight, why believers are still in the boat. Now, we still talk about the 11 that's still in the boat. Yeah. All right? Is uh, it's because they just don't want to walk by faith. Okay. Amen. It's easy for us to cheerlead when others are walking by faith. Sit on the sideline and just admire other folk. You know, oh, what a great job that is. They're walking by faith. You know, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. They're walking by faith. But when are you going to get in the game? Amen. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. My goodness. They just didn't want to walk by faith. It's easy for me to watch your faith work. To sit on the sidelines and cheer you on. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Look at verse number 7. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Verse number 7. What it says. For we walk by what? Uh-huh. Not by sight. We walk by faith. Not by sight. Those other 11 stayed in the boat. They decided to just walk by sight and not by faith. Because I submit to you tonight, all of them could have got out the boat. All of them could have walked on the water if they wanted to. Now, some think that Peter only took one or two steps. The Bible says that Jesus was afar off. Amen. Now, now, come here, brother. Let me, let me, let me use you. Here, here's the trick of the devil. You 
stare at the road. <laughs> what the devil wants you to, to believe is that when you walk by faith, Jesus is so far from you that you're going to drown. Now, if you ever read the scripture, the Bible says that Jesus stretched forth his hand. Stretch your hand out, brother Pew. Okay. So, so he had to be close enough to Jesus for Jesus to stretch forth his hand and Jesus to grab him. See, many of you are so close to the manifestation of what God promised you because Jesus is right there. But because the devil has convinced you, don't walk by faith, stay in the boat. You'll never get to the manifestation. Amen. Thank you, brother Pew. Praise the Lord. Amen. Give brother Pew a big hand. Amen. See, we got to walk by faith, man. I mean, the manifestation is right there. Jesus, he said, the Bible says that he stretched forth his hand and delivered Peter. He was that close to him. And the devil wanted to convince you that by walking by faith is going to leave you in a situation where you, you were drowned. And Jesus said, no, 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 no. I'm right there with you. The Bible says I will never leave you. No, forsake you. I, look, I, I'm not going to turn my back on you. When you're walking by faith, I am right there with you. They don't want to walk by faith, though. They stand in the boat. Okay, watch this. Romans chapter 14. Did you know? I'm going to just read the scripture. Watch this, watch this, watch this. Romans 14. Romans chapter 14. Look at verse number 23. Romans 14, verse 23. And I want to get to the, to the last part of that, but I'm going to read the first part just to get to the last part. You ready? And he that doubted is damned if he eat, because he eateth not of faith. Now here's the part I want to get to. For whatever is not of faith is what? Oh. Whatever is not of faith is what? Amplified says the last part this way. For whatever does not originate and proceed from faith is sin. Whatever is done without a conviction of its approval by God is sinful. So if I am not walking by faith, then I'm walking in what? So if I'm still in the boat and won't get out of the boat because I'm fearful, I'm afraid, is what? Oh. Because faith is what pleases God. Amen? He that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a reward of them that diligently seek him. So if I'm not walking in faith, I'm doing something opposite then. And if you are still in the boat because you, you don't walk by faith and you want to make sure all the conditions are right. Well, you know, Pastor, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to wait until the conditions get right. When, when are they going to get right? They're going to get right when you make them right. <laughs> Woo, praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Faith. Walking by faith. Those boys stayed in the boat. And many Christians are still in the boat. They don't, they don't want to come out the boat. Amen. And, and I, I truly believe that one of the reasons why Peter went down was because he heard their voices. Yeah. Peter, what you doing, man? See, Peter, see, Peter you always acting like that. You, you jumping before you even know what's going on. Yeah, you know, you know, you know, you can't walk on no water. I mean, boy, look at you. Look at you, Peter. Now, okay, watch this, watch this. How, how many of you ever been to the beach? Okay. Been to a pool? All right. When you jump in, do you begin to sink or do you sink? No, 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 no. You, I, just try it. You ain't going to begin to sink. You're going to start sinking. 
I mean, the law of gravity is going to pull you straight down. Because your body weight is going to go through the water and you're going to sink. But the Bible says with Peter, he began to sink. So it was a slow process for him. Because he got distracted. <laughs> Y'all better get this revelation, man. Many believers won't get out that boat because they're afraid. They're worried about what folks are going to say. Your family, your friends, and even your enemies. But they are not the factor. The fact is, do I believe God enough? I'm going to step out of this boat. And I'm going to walk on the water. Amen. I'm going to do things that nobody else have ever done before. But I got to get out the boat. Amen. I got to get out the boat. And I got to stop because I am out of time. Give God a big hand.